Well, as you've seen by now, and as we've reported throughout the day, there are massive riots in Charlotte after another police shooting. But I want you to look at what Hillary Clinton did with this. Immediately, she tweeted out, another unarmed black man was shot in a police incident. You understand what she's doing here. She is using a dog whistle when she does this. Completely devoid of facts, not looking at the circumstances, not waiting for an investigation to be done. She tries to stoke the race war, and she did it successfully. She said this should be intolerable. And, you know, this all those intolerable people. What she is doing with this dog whistle is she's saying to black community, especially to Black Lives Matter followers, hey, it's those in- irredeemable, intolerable, deplorable white people. Go get them. And that's precisely what they did. You know, she is throwing gasoline on a fire. As a matter of fact, she and Black Lives Matter have been going from incident to incident throwing Molotov cocktails. We need to have police that are controlled. We need to use police differently than they're being used. We need to have better training. We need to hold the police who do these types of things that are uh, unwarranted shootings or excessive use of force. We need to hold them responsible. But that's not what she's saying, especially when she jumps into this at this point with that kind of analysis. Because what really happened? Let's take a look at what Reuters, how they reported this. Man fatally shot by police in North Carolina had a gun, say authorities. But listen to what they said. It raises questions, this whole incident, they said, raises questions of racial bias. Now, they go down, and uh, racial bias in U.S. law enforcement. They go down and say that in two paragraphs down, a black Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer killed Keith Scott. You understand? It raises questions of racial bias. When a black man is shot dead by a black cop. So we need to go out and attack white people. That's what Hillary Clinton is doing. That is the narrative that Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Black Lives Matter, George Soros sell to the American people. As Paul Watson pointed out in his article with that title, he says, Scott exited the vehicle, according to authorities, armed with a firearm and posed an immediate deadly threat to the officers who subsequently fired their weapon, striking the subject. That's a statement from the Mecklenburg Police Department. Black Lives Matter supporters insisted that Scott was disabled, that he was only carrying a book. Within hours, a mob of around 1,000 rioters began staging unrest, blocking Interstate 85, looting trucks before setting fire to their contents. One family said the mob threw rocks at the windshields of cars, shattering the glass. That can also kill people, folks. Let's understand. Wouldn't it be a good idea, if there is a dispute here about what's happening, that we don't immediately go out and start attacking people who don't even have anything to do with that incident? If the police are directly contradicting the narrative of Black Lives Matter, can we wait and get some video footage and actually see what's going on? No, not according to Hillary Clinton, because it doesn't suit her purposes. And then look at the way the media takes this. We have uh, Mark Barber from WSOC Channel 9 calling the protesters who are smashing through doors Uh, calling them protesters and not rioters. We have another journalist doing the same thing. Uh, Trey from WCNC says, protesters decided to smash my work vehicle van window. No, they're simply rioters. They're dangerous, out-of-control rioters. Call it what it is. And yet we have seen this time and again. But I want you to understand just how much contempt Hillary has for law enforcement and how she is trying to stoke this race war, and really a war between black people and the police. Going back to the Democrat National Convention, if you remember, the police uh, union there in Philadelphia uh, said they were very angry with Hillary Clinton. They criticized her for inviting, that was immediately after there had been a shooting in Dallas where a Black Lives Matter sympathizer had shot several cops. Uh, They criticized Hillary Clinton for having victims of police shootings there, but not having any victims of uh, the the police victims who had been shot in Dallas prior to that. That was a narrative about five days before the convention. And again, when I talked to Jesse Jackson on the floor of the convention, I asked him about that. He goes, oh, yeah, I guess after he uh, threw some uh, uh, mud on uh, the police and on white people for being uh, prejudiced with all this. He says, well, maybe we should have them and that might be a good thing to do. Three days later, they did invite the Dallas police chief and some to speak for them. So they did address that at that point in time, but that was not their intention. And as a matter of fact, we've just seen in the last week, we've seen now the uh, Philadelphia Fraternal Order police chief 
saying that they are going to endorse Donald Trump, still angry at Hillary Clinton. But more importantly, look at what he has to say as he says, when we were deciding who we were going to endorse, he said, we sent them questionnaires and she just blew it off. He said, the Clinton campaign showed absolutely no interest in winning their support. He said they didn't care. Their attitude then, back in July during the DNC, was that they were going to win this thing anyway. So who cares? He said, now I think the tides have turned a little bit and she's on her heels. As many times as we've tried to and have a fair process and an open process, the emails back were that they're not interested. And no thanks. Just snide remarks like that, he said. He said, we gave them a very fair process. We thought we put out a questionnaire, and she absolutely refused, outright refused, with a nasty campaign rebuttal as to why she wouldn't. You see what that's about? She's not going to even fill out their questionnaire to even say how the police could be improved. Yeah. They can be improved. There's no organization that is perfect. And in any organization, you're always going to have individuals that do the wrong thing. You're going to have violent cops. You're going to have crooked cops. The question is, will the system take those cops out? That's what we need to look at. And there need to be some reforms of the police. Any organization can be reformed, can be improved. She has no solution for that. She's not even interested in talking about that. She wants that to be maintained just as she wants to maintain the situation in Syria. Why? because it creates chaos that they can exploit. That's what's fundamentally behind this. Look at their reluctance to call the bombing in New York City terrorism. Today we had Ahmad Khan Rahami charged in New York. What was he charged with? He was charged with bombing, property destruction, use of weapons of mass destruction, but interestingly, not charged with terrorism. Now, why is that? Well, they say that it's because they couldn't link him to a terrorist group, even though... He had a jihadi journal, even though he had written down uh, a, a journal of why he was doing this, terrorist motivations. They say, well, we couldn't link him to a group. And yet every time we see a terrorist attack or a, uh, an attack of, of, of uh, a mass shooting, it is always a lone individual, a lone wolf, a lone terrorist. Yet they won't call it terrorism because it's Islamic terrorism. We've gone from a situation where Hillary and Obama can't use the words Islamic terror to where the FBI refuses to use it, just as they gave this guy a pass in the same way that they gave Hillary Clinton a pass, saying she didn't really intend to uh, lose those emails. No, she did. She smashed devices. She had her IT guy on Reddit looking to see how he could do it and using an industrial strength eraser, not just deleting the files, but erasing every shred of it with bleach bit. At the same time, the FBI is playing these kind of games. They're clowning around with terrorism, charging teenagers who talk in a, in a hoax and a joke kind of way on Facebook about using clowns to kidnap and abduct people. They charge them with terroristic threats. Meanwhile, as we look at the election and we look at the Federal Reserve, we see that Donald Trump is criticizing Janet Yellen because today she came out and said, no, we're not going to raise interest rates. That is a boost to Hillary Clinton. If they were to raise interest rates, if the stock market were to take a dive, of course, that would reflect poorly on Hillary Clinton, who is a continuation of Obama's policies. And if we remember, it was Andrea Mitchell's husband, Alan Greenspan, head of the Federal Reserve, who manipulated interest rates to help Bill Clinton get elected. Yet, uh, she tells people, I can say, this is Janet Yellen saying, I can say emphatically that partisan politics play no role in our decisions about the appropriate stance of monetary policy. Donald Trump says, no, her choices are obviously political. Look, folks, this is a a private organization. And as we pointed out before, the guy that owns Chobani Greek yogurt is sitting on the Fed board, even though he's not an American citizen making policy decisions. And of course, he is a big open border guy. And the sister organization to the Federal Reserve, the IRS, as we see today, there is a hearing going on today in Congress as to whether or not the sitting chief will be impeached. This is another organization that has deleted records of what they did, attacking people politically. Nixon was impeached for this, but today we can't even fire any of the minions who do this type of work. That is the state of America today. Now, stay with us when we come back from break. We've got a report from John Bowne. He's going to look at more detail as to what Barack Obama said today at the U.N.
Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Join us for our live coverage of the upcoming debate between Donald J. Trump and Hillary Clinton on September 26th. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash show for all the live coverage. And also go to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Will Hillary wear an earpiece? Will Donald Trump and Hillary actually be on the same stage? Or will they try to do another forum like we've seen before? This is all going to be leading up to our 48-hour long coverage on November 8th of the election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and the future of America. Make sure you spread this like wildfire because we need to get patriots all over the country aligned and ready to stand up and make the changes we need done by voting and getting someone in who will actually take America back and make America great again. This has been Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com.